Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video. This time it's going to be some competitively oriented matches with World Chalice, my list that I played at the 200th YCS that I posted on my channel yesterday, up against some Goki. I'm going to be playtesting against my friend again, who's going to be playing Goki, uh, Dark Goki, a variant of Dark Goki, essentially. Uh, and basically just going to be showing you how this matchup sort of plays out with these two decks that focus on a very similar mechanic of just link spamming and trying to Gumblar the opponent for four. And uh, just showing you how that matchup sort of plays out for both decks. We're going to be side decking. Uh, as you can see, my side deck has, you know, Gamma Seals in it, Hand Traps. Uh, the Twin Twisters and the Red Reboots that you see are definitely not going to be seen in this matchup at all because we both don't play back row uh, in any, like, sort of, like, uh, sustainable function. Like, it's definitely not something that we're, uh, we mess around with. It's literally just summon monsters, go into huge boards, just try and make it to where the opponent has the hardest time playing the game as possible. And that's unfortunate that that's how, like, combo decks work nowadays. It's either just outright kill you or just make it really hard for you to play. Uh, but, like, that's that's just the way Yu-Gi-Oh! is nowadays. You just you just use your combo decks to the best of its capabilities, and usually that ends up going into Gumblar Dragon or some sort of Firewall Trigate Field or something like that. Uh, but so, like I said, this list is the list that I posted up yesterday. This is my exact list that I played at the 200th YCS. Uh, I feel like the list operates very smoothly, very consistently. Uh, very few times do I have instances where I'm not able to play the game. Uh, but you'll see more of that as we uh, as we do these next five to six games, or I guess possibly four to six. I'm making I'm being very very presumptuous and thinking that I might not get two would or that I might not two o my friend during our testing. It's going to be two matches regardless. Well, actually, no, I think. If, I, if either of us gets 2 would in a match, I think the rule is we're going to add a third match on. I have to set rules for myself for this video. I need to like set up an actual formula other than just play games, record Yu-Gi-Oh, commentate. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this is the list uh, that I posted yesterday. If you're interested in seeing how it plays against meta matchups, this one's going to be Goki. I plan on doing some more matchups showing how it plays against Altergeist and Striker and stuff like that. Um, so if you're interested then definitely keep that in mind. More of that sort of stuff will come to the channel in the future. But anyway, without wasting too much time, let's get straight into the first game of the matches and see how this stuff plays out. All right, so going into game one, this is two matches that we played. We played sided matches. There are three games each, so six games total. First game, I get to start because I won rock, paper, scissors, and my opening hand is actually really good. It's an amazing opening hand. The only thing I could have really, you know, asked for is had, like, the Undyne or the Succession been swapped out for something like a Magical Midbreaker field, but luckily my opponent is playing a Goki deck that doesn't main any significant hand traps, so it's basically just easy to play regardless. So I'm able to resolve Venus plus Exodius, I'm able to go into the World Legacy World Chalice play, getting Orum on the board, doing all sorts of stuff, go into my Ningirsu draw 3 play, use Firewall to bounce the Eva that I got out of deck off Summon Sorceress, do Ningirsu, special summoning out of my hand off Firewall, getting my Link Karibo back onto the board, uh, and then just starting to do a bunch of stuff from there. Uh, basically, I had to get rid of the Guard Dragon and bring the Link Karibo back for a very specific reason uh, in-game, but I can't remember exactly what that reason was right now. Um, but basically, it was just something I think I needed to get it off the field because it was in an incorrect positioning to allow me to do what I wanted to do with Orm reviving Firewall and putting Gumblar over in my rightmost monster zone. Uh, but basically, I'm able to end on a live Firewall, uh, a Trigate Wizard, and, uh, and the Gumblar for four, so basically there's not really much my opponent's capable of doing here, especially considering that I've already taken four cards away, the Trigate gets to negate the Engage, and uh, everything is all good and dandy, all said and done, so it's pretty straightforward how this game is going to end. Now I have to discard a card for Gumblar here because I revived Ningirsu next to Firewall uh, Link Zone, uh, so like you, you do have to be capable of uh, catching that, you do have to like be careful with that, but you can easily just discard one and that's completely fine. But now going into game two, we sided. My opponent gets to start, but I did not open any hand traps. Uh, even though I side into my third copy of Ash Blossom, my three Droll and Lockbirds, and I side the Gamma Seals, which are also just good um, because it allows you to break the extra link. You just tribute it over like the Trigate or tribute it over one of the things in the EMZ above the Trigate Wizard, and you're capable of then playing. It's like with, the, with a hand like this, for example, if any of those Lees is replaced by a Gamma Seal, then I completely do not care about the Gumblar for four or the Trigate, because if he Gumblars me the first time, I'm just going to discard the Lee um, and the uh, World Legacy World Chalice, and then when he Gumblars me during my draw phase, I'm going to discard the Eva plus another card, 
the EVO will trigger to get searches, and at that point, that pretty much successfully baits the uh, the Trigate Wizard because you're either going to negate the EVA or you're going to just get the Trigate negated by whatever uh, EVA searches, which is Herald. It's going to be negated by Herald of Orange Light. Uh, so it basically deals with the Trigate in one fell swoop. So EVA is actually just kind of one of the better cards to draw in the face of getting Gumblard for four by your opponent. Uh, but like the uh, World Legacy World Chalice lets you banish for succession. It lets you banish for a World Legacy World Chalice to tribute over Ibli and stuff like that. Uh, there's there's a lot of different like different uh, circumstances that allow it to be really good. But so my opponent leaves me with Ibli, has double Mermaid in the EMZs, was able to revive Firewall Dragon off World Legacy Succession. So uh, I'm capable of uh, doing basically nothing because he's got a Trigate Negate, which I did use the Herald of Orange Light on. But he has Firewall Dragon on the field that he used to bounce my World Legacy World Chalice, and I'm not able to break his extra link at all because he's got double Mermaid. So everything is being reduced by 2,000 each because of the mer two, the two mermaids being there. So, and even if they weren't being reduced by 2,000 each, the link rebo makes something uh, go to zero. So I have to effectively have two outs to the mermaids uh, because the link rebo is going to trade with one of them. So, very very uh, interesting to consider there. But so I get to start. I go uh, Undyne plus uh, plus World Legacy World Chalice into that play that I did a combo video on. This searches Venus from your deck off Summon Sorceress. My opponent has an Ash Blossom that he sided in, but I'm able to call by the Grave that. Very nice, very good. I have Brilliant Fusion in my hand, but I also drew Garnet, so that's unfortunate, but that's ultimately fine because that Garnet is going to fulfill the, uh, the role in my hand of needing a monster in order to legally trigger Firewall right here. Firewall's effect triggers, attempting to summon the Garnet out of my hand, but then you chain the Firewall Dragon's effect to return Guard Dragon and Venus to your uh, hand, and then Special Venus. So Undyne World Legacy World Chalice gets you into Venus, which then goes into this draw 3 play that you're seeing, and then you're able to go into a Gumblar for 4 plus, uh, plus Trigate. Uh, now I actually, I believe I don't go for the Trigate play here, specifically because I specialed that Guard Dragon too early. Uh, you're supposed to special the Guard Dragon later if you're doing the Trigate play, but it's still fine. It's still a live Firewall and a Gumblar. Now, I make the mistake here of uh, just, like, fat fingering yes on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. That's one of the reasons why I don't like Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, is that I triggered my Gumblar, but then Firewall also asked if I wanted to activate its effect to bounce, and I just clicked yes to that unwillingly as well, just because I just clicked yes on whatever popped up. So that's sort of a me problem as well as a Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro problem, but it's like... I just, I just click yes. Oops, I'm a filthy yes clicker. Who knew? I could have easily have just kept that firewall alive and just not done anything. But I still ended on a very good board. I ended on gum, uh, Gumblaring him for four, and then I had the World Legacy World Chalice, which I was able to use uh, to get rid of the Isold that he summoned. But then he was able to follow up a rematch, uh, but still wasn't able to do much because he couldn't go into Isold because he doesn't play a second Isold because it's very standard to not play to Isold because the extra deck is super tight. Uh, but so even with those uh, fat fingery mess ups. I was still able to just win the game outright, right here, right now. Uh, and basically that's the way these matchups seem to go. Uh, starting a new match, our decks are both unsided. I won Rock, Paper, Scissors again. Uh, we actually went back and forth for like a solid five turns on Rock, Paper, Scissors. I remember specifically we were like just picking the same thing over and over again as each other. Um, both of us really wanted to go first because our decks essentially do the exact same thing as one another. Uh, when you actually boil it down to... My deck is trying to gumball you for four and trigate you, but also draw a lot of cards in the process and like build up like a hand resource to work with, like with either uh, my Ash Blossoms that are in my main deck or with Herald of Orange Lights that I could search. And then it has a really good follow-up because it's capable of banishing World Legacy World Chalice to search for World Legacy Succession. So I would say that ar arguably World Chalice has the better follow-up play for turn three because you can bring back either used Firewalls or bring back an Gear Suit and non-target send cards to Grave. Um, and all that sort of stuff, uh, but Goki is more consistent at starting, uh, and also has a more potent total field of like extra length Gumblar plus Trigate Wizard, whereas this deck usually, very rarely does it extra link and then Gumblar, but this is one of the, uh, this is one of the, uh, situations where it did, even though it's not a true extra link because that Reaper Docus is pointing to my opponent's field, I put it there so that I could just discard two for free with Gumblar before then going into a massive Soul Charge play, like I saw that Soul Charge play coming, and it was like, we're just going to use all the resources I have at my disposal, and then we'll put stuff where it needs to be. So, pretty, pretty unfair, actually. Soul Charge is one hell of a drug. Uh, you basically just, as soon as you see it, you put all of your resources into a singular Link monster, and then you go from there, Soul Charging for four or five. So, 
Next game, I don't draw any hand traps. I sided very heavily. Again, no Gamma Seal, no hand traps. Um, it's one of those things where I might actually just main more hand traps, like main the third copy of Ash, and then put like more uh, hand traps into my side deck, just so I could potentially side into those. Like, you know, in place of the water fronts that I said in my deck profile never got sided in, uh, and were uh, the cards I was considering taking out. Those could easily be more hand traps. I could put those in, or they could be more Kaijus, because even in this sort of hand, a Kaiju would be really, really good. I could just discard the two Lees. Uh, I could uh, keep the Transmodify and the Monster Reborn during uh, during my next draw phase, uh, and then like I could just do things with uh, do things with Kaiju's potentially. Um, it's not like ideal, but in a better hand, Kaiju's are obviously really good against this sort of play because Kaiju your opponent's monster and then summon like Venus or just a monster that uh, allows you to access Venus. Uh, is very good. Like, if you have Undyne, you can banish World Legacy World Chalice for another copy of World Legacy World Chalice, the Gamma Seal. You tribute your opponent's extra length zone out, and then you're able to just go into the Search Venus play, and, like, that's very powerful. There's a lot of different things that you have in terms of uh, what you're capable of doing with this specific sort of uh, deck. The way that this deck works on itself is fantastic. I really like this deck. But So, my opponent sort of messed up his combo a bit. Didn't gumbler me for four, but just established the extra link anyway, but... Like, with Link Rebo up there, like, he just kind of messed up at a specific point, but I'm not sure what point he messed up at, <laughs> if I'm honest with you. I'm not sure exactly what point it was. I think he specialed the wrong monster at the wrong time in the wrong zone to continue with Firewall, uh, so it made it really hard for him to do anything. So, I'm able to try and capitalize on this uh, position, but ultimately I'm at 200 life because I wasn't able to do anything the previous turn. And, uh, and, like, yeah, we're just, we're messing around. We're just trying to capitalize, but my opponent gets to Gumblar the last two cards out of my hand after I, uh, search with Lee, so that's a bit unfortunate. I get to use Ningirsu, top deck of Shade Brigandine, and then try to go to Imduk. I use Ningirsu to send Gumblar, because I, in theory, my, in my mind, I can't out the Gumblar, um, with raw attack power, and it's gonna kill me next turn. And I attack with the Imduk into the Nightmare Mermaid, and completely forget that, like, the Cerberus is protecting it from destruction. I try to use Imduk's destroy effect. But I completely forgot about the Cerberus there <laughs> and just suicided myself. So not the best played game, but whatever. So I opened Brilliant Fusion Lee Midbreaker Field in the next game. Uh, it's uh, pretty much pretty clear cut from there. I'm able to use Orm to bring back the Venus. Uh, the Orm and the uh, Summon Sorceress are both immune to uh, Ghost Ogres or Impermanences. So that's really, really good. And I've got the Exodius, so like that's good, something good that I can follow up with. Now I think I end up misplaying with Exodius too because I'm thinking about whether or not I should use it. And then I just clicked yes on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro to use it. Uh, and, like, that was just a mistake. I think I ended up putting back my Link Kribo. Like, there's a specific point when I was supposed to put Link Kribo on my field and then have Eva in my hand, and then I was supposed to summon Exodius. But for some reason, I just didn't do it. I think it was literally right before I summoned this Ningirsu. Yes, it was. Because I summoned the Link Kribo back. At that point, I was supposed to summon the Exodius and then do some Link plays with it, uh, and then do the Ningirsu. But for some reason, I just didn't. Oops. Um, so, but ultimately it ends up working out in my favor anyway because I've got the Reborn, which means I can Reborn for Firewall. Now, I can't target his stuff, but it does mean I'm able to do this, which is to put the Herald of Orange Light back into my hand with the Venus that's already there. And I've got the Trigate that uses its Negate on, uh, the Suprex, and then I'm able to use Herald of Orange Light on his Malicious that he discarded off of my Gumblar. So from here, it's just pretty clear cut. His hand was not powerful enough to play through two Disruptions, unfortunately for him. Uh, but so now I'm able to just end the turn right here, right now. Now, in a previous game, I can't remember specifically which one it was, he had Midbreaker Field in his hand, but he didn't play it. Um, that was just because uh, he messed up and just went and summoned Suprex immediately or summoned whatever card he played first um, instead of playing Midbreaker first, and Midbreaker has to be the first card you play. Uh, so that was a bit unfortunate for him, but luckily, like, we just decided to keep the game going because other than Herald of Orange Light, there's no cards in my list in general that interact with Midbreaker Field on his turn one, and so, like, we were playing, and he was like, oh, I think we have to start this game over, and I was like, nah, it's fine. Uh, like, the Midbreaker's not going to be relevant because, like, I play no cards that you would lose to other than, like, Herald of Orange Light, but if you're able to push through Herald of Orange Light, I just literally gumbled myself for two cards. Um, so it's not going to be that big of an issue. So that was just some minor things. There were some minor mistakes made, but I mean, that's what you get when you're playing on a system that you're both super, like, not familiar with, uh, like, playtesting wise. Like, me and him both strictly prefer to use Dueling Book for playtesting because we're able to talk our plays out. There's no timer breathing down our throats. Uh, there's no, um, there's no, uh, like, you're committed to this play. Like, you could take back something if you accidentally misclick on something. Uh, whereas Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro does not allow you any of that sort of stuff. 
Uh, so it's like, as a playtesting medium, it's a little bit inferior, but it's better for video purposes because it's a better display. Um, I'm able to put my own high texture reg, uh, uh, my own high texture um, image images in and stuff like that. So that was basically the World Chalice versus Goki matchup. Basically, two decks doing the exact same thing as one another. Uh, World Chalice seems to have a little bit better of a follow up if your board gets like messed with. As long as you have a Link Arrow on your side of the field, you're able to bring back anything with Succession that's searchable off your graveyard to World Legacy World Chalice. That is one of the things I like about the deck the most. Um, and also, your hand typically is a lot more uh, constructed of cards like Reborn, Soul Charge, or things like that because you're just resolving a card that says draw three cards uh, in the form of Ningirsu. And also, Ningirsu is literally the best Link monster in the game at outing things on the field because it's non targeting non-destroying removal so anyway that's basically the gist of what i wanted to do for this video i will definitely be doing some more world chalice gameplay videos in this style against other matchups like altergeist and pure sky striker and stuff like that and then i'll also be moving on to other decks like mermails against this suite of the like top three best decks and stuff like that and maybe go into some other matchups as well uh, maybe test some new and upcoming decks against these, like decks that would possibly be uh, in the format for play during YCS Niagara Falls, stuff like that. So keep that in mind if you want to see more. Definitely leave some suggestions in the comments down below as always. And other than that, like the video if you want to see more. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content and haven't subscribed to the channel already. I'd love to welcome you on board. And if you want to catch some of my streams that I do rather frequently, or at least not as of recently, but I'm going to get back into it very soon, there's a Twitch link in the description down below if you want to go follow that, get notified when I start my live streams. And also, if you want to join my channel's Discord server, a link to that is in the description of this video as well. But like I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.